Hi guys, so in today's video, we're gonna be taking a look at blending 2K gloss on this T5 camper van that we've got in for some paint repair. So we do a lot of these for a guy, and as obviously you guys would probably know, most of these are done in a 2K gloss. Now, there's two ways that you could do these. You could do them with a base and a clear, or you could do them with a gloss and a clear. So what we're gonna be doing is the way that I have found the most efficient and the most cost effective which is to use a 2K gloss and use a 2K gloss a bit like base coat. So we're gonna put the 2K gloss on the van. We're gonna color up the areas that we need to color up across the van. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna clear coat the rest of the van and put some little clear blends in. And what that'll do is that will seal everything up, give us a nice even color. But compared to base coat and um, 2K gloss, we pay around about 30 pound a litre for base coat on our system to mix it, it's around about 50 pound a litre. So there's a big cost saving to using the gloss over base coat. And also it's a lot faster for coverage. So on something like this blue, I mean, one coat will probably give us almost full coverage on this. So it's a lot quicker, a lot more cost effective to blend 2K gloss like this, because you can get a lot of issues with trying to solid paint panels. Like I don't know how well it shows up on camera, but these two panels are an absolute mile out as far as the color goes. And there's a few areas on this van. Um, the bonnet's the same down at the front here. The bonnet's quite a few shades off to the wing. So we've had our match done to the wing so that we can color in the bonnet. We're gonna do a little blend near the back door to make sure that's all right. And then we're just gonna clear coat over the whole lot to give it a nice even blend and all we'll have to do at the end of it then is just quickly polish those blends out we'll end up with a nice looking van now this is the first job that i've painted or i've come to paint since i've been back in and i thought as soon as i'm gonna have to take this job steady it'd be an ideal job for me to take you guys through and show you what i'm doing why i'm doing it and how i'm doing it along the process so i'm gonna go and get some paint mixed up put my spray suit on and give this a tack cloth down and then we'll get started putting some paint down. So this is just a standard 2K gloss that we're using on this. This is nothing fancy at all. And what we're going to try and do is try and keep it sort of all the blend along that middle section there. Now, you will have to excuse in the video that the color looks off on the video, but when you see this outside, the color does look fine. I don't know what was going on with the GoPro during the filming on this, but it seems just to change its color grading all the way through shooting this video on this blue. Like at one stage, it looks really light, and then as soon as you get down a little bit further, it suddenly goes a completely different color for some reason. But that's the GoPro, not the color itself. So just ignore that in the video. So as I said in the intro, this color is pretty much, as you can see there, one coat and it's covered. But we're going to do one coat over all the areas to make sure everything's colored. And then we're going to give it a second coat and just a second extra little blend just to make sure that everything is nice. Now for the color stage, I'm using my Segola 4600 DVR Aqua. It's got a 1.2 XL setup in it. Um, it's got a nice fine spray pattern so it will allow me, even though this is a gloss, to use the gloss just like I'd use base coat to cover these areas up and get those nice light blends across the van. Now, this is one thing that I learned a while ago and I found that it is an absolutely brilliant and a lot more cost effective way of doing a van like this. Um, and it's a lot safer as well because if we're doing, say, we're doing a base and clear we're going to be using quite a lot of base say if it's a white or a red or even possibly on a blue like this it might take quite a few coats to cover it up and as you can see with this one coat pretty much and it is covered um, and there's no issue with using a clear over a direct gloss like this to blend it with um, there's no issue whatsoever because say like today I've just done a white Vauxhall and I did the same I got the Casablanca white that the Vauxhall is done in, in 2K gloss, just to blow in the rear arch and part of the rear bumper corner, and then just gave it one real good coat of clear coat over the top to seal everything up and blend everything in. But I literally used like one and a half coats of gloss 
and then went straight over with one coat of clear. The car looks absolutely amazing and there's no issue with it whatsoever. It's a lot cheaper, it's a lot more cost effective as far as shop goes. It's a lot quicker as far as the paint in the booth goes. Because all you need to do is apply all your colour in sort of the way that you would normally apply direct gloss. But when it comes to the areas that you want to blend, apply those like you would base coat, just feather the colour out. And then you can go around and seal it up like you would with clear coat normally. <coughs> now, the reason that I choose to do it this way is because obviously with clear coat being clear, I know that might sound a little bit of a stupid thing to say, but where the 2K gloss is blending up those pillars and everything, you'd need to put some, say, fade out thinner over it and then you'd need to polish it in. Or you'd need to risk an edge to edge match on a panel. Now, for most of you guys that have got a little bit more experience, you'll know that a lot of these van colours, especially something like this blue, um, an edge to edge match on this van is just not going to happen. Um, it's probably not been looked after a lot in its life, so the colour's probably pretty faded. It's going to have gone through like a lot of truck wash and a lot of cheap car washes. It's going to have had a lot of detergent slat at it over the years. So, you know, the chance of this getting a really, really good edge to edge match on this is going to be near impossible. So if we tried to polish these blends out and we just left it as 2K gloss blends, the chances of having two different shades and that are going to be quite a way out, I would say, and then you polishing them together to make it look right, um, what you're probably going to end up with is what looks like a line through where your blend is. And it's basically going to look like a line of two different colours. On one side you're going to have your fresh, on the other side you're going to have the old colour. And obviously when we're trying to tidy these up for a guy that is then going to turn this into a very nice camper van, uh, and it's all going to be colour coded up, you know, on something like that pillar there, you don't want a line, a real bold edge of two different coats of gloss that have been polished together um, looking really off. So the easiest way to do it is just to take your gloss up to one point um, and then where you're doing your blends to compound and polish those areas up and then just grey scotch the area up and then just clear up a little bit above where you've stopped your gloss work. Now on something like this back door it means I will just re-gloss the whole back doors but say along the edges like right around there I just put a bit of soft foam and I can just polish the clear blend out because the clear blend's going to leave no colour difference whatsoever. And this was a little bit of an awkward colour anyway. Even in the gloss, this went on, and while it was fresh, straight off the gun, it looked quite light. And then as it dried out, as you saw on the bonnet a minute ago, it actually darkens off a little bit. Um, so again, with base coat, if that was something that was happening, you know, You'd be into a lot of base coat, getting all your, you know, colouring all this up, blending it all up. And these vans have got quite an area. So if you're talking base coat, you're going to be bucketing a lot of base coat. Now, I'm still going here into the second coat on this van with my first pot of paint. Um, and we've already done down both sides and the back doors and the bonnet. So cost effective wise, I think I had a litre and a half for this van in the gloss. And that did the whole van and all the colour coding work on the bumpers and the spoiler and the mirror caps and everything else. It's an absolute mile cheaper and it's 10 times safer as far as polishing your blends out when it comes to 2K gloss. Because <clears throat> you're just using your gloss like a base coat rather than using gloss as a gloss in effect. So there I have just topped up the gun. So I have got, you know, one and a quarter coats done on this van. Um, just with that first paint cup full of gloss. Now, as I said, this is the way that I perfected it over the years. Uh, <clears throat> some guys might say, oh, well, it's a waste of clear coat, or no, you should just polish the gloss blend in. Like, I've done a few where we just polished the gloss blend in, but the chances of it going down and it actually looking right, um, you know, you guys know, we're quite particular about the work that we do at our shop so even though this is in effect a trade job this guy is going to be turning this into a camper and then selling this to a customer and if there's an issue with the paint that comes back on me so i want his vans to look nice because he brings 10 
20 of these vans a year to me. So I want him to be happy. I want his customers to be happy with the quality of the work that they're doing so that we continue to get work. So leaving a little bit of a dodgy blend on a van that you could say, right, well, it's a van, you know, does it really matter? Well, to us it does. You know, we want the job to be right, whether it be a van or anything else. And again, I'm sorry about the massive colour shift in the camera. Um, I really don't know what is going on with my GoPro at the moment. I might have to have a little tweak of the settings on it just to try and stop it from altering the colours all the way through the video because it's even on this video it's doing my head in a little bit but unfortunately that just seems to be the way that technology seems to be going this year at the shop. Um, but you know this does make something like this probably in the region of almost like a couple of hundred pounds cheaper as far as materials goes to do. Now some people might say it's not as good because you're using gloss instead of base coat. Well this van was gloss in the first place. So in effect all we're going to be doing by adding clear coat over the top for the blends um, is putting a coat of clear over all this gloss which in effect is just going to give it more protection and more UV resistance um, in the long run. So in effect it's a better job than the van had in the first place. It's more cost effective for the customer because we don't have to go respray in the full van. We can just put some cheeky little clear blends in and obviously a clear blend, once it's polished, you're not going to see it. Um, so it's a really, really good way to go about doing a van like this. And as you can probably tell, when I get round to the areas where the blends need to be, I'm just taking my time because I don't want to shoot too far up. You know, I don't want the colour to be hitting that foam the same as it wouldn't with base coat. So I'm just going a little bit more careful around those areas and then I'm going fully wet over the rest of it. So where it does look a little bit patchy at the moment, that's just where the fresh paint's going on and this colour does darken up as it tacks off. Now, a question that I've been asked quite a few times um, over the years, because I've mentioned before in videos that I quite often use direct gloss and then use clear over the top, is my recommendation would be to use the same hardener in your gloss as you're using it in your clear. So you're going to have no issues with trapping solvents because you've got, say, a medium hardener in one and a fast hardener in the other. The same with the amount of thinners that you're putting in. If you're putting 10% in your gloss, put 10% in your clear. You want each coat to go down with the same hardener ratio, with the same hardener type, and also with the same thinner speed and the same amount of thinners so we're not risking solvent pop or any reactions or anything like that in the future because obviously if we're getting up to like three or four coats if you were to put two coats of clear over this or one coat of clear over this you know you could quite happily go around with two coats of clear over this if you really wanted to um, but you're going to have to think about the solvent pop issues and how much material you're putting down and really sort of start taking your time with that sort of thing. So here's one for you John in the comments who was asking a couple of videos back where my 1.3 XL clear gun has gone. As you can see it's still knocking around at the shop but it was just over the winter as things were a bit cooler. The 1.3 XL I was finding I was just getting a little bit too wet but now the weather has warmed up a tiny little bit and the humidity is getting a bit better then it's, it's a really really nice gun for putting clear down with in the slightly warmer weather that we've got now. So all that I really want to do here now is concentrate on putting one nice coat of clear down over this and where I get to where the blends were I'm going to go straight over the top of the blends and then just move it up a little bit higher the same as I would as if it was doing base and clear and literally that is the biggest tip that I could give you if you want to try and blend gloss work just use a bit of clear to do the final bit on your blend because when you polish clear obviously into the freshly buffed up paintwork you're not going to see any join lines whereas if you're trying to blend that gloss and then polish the gloss into it you will see a difference so where I've gone there when I polish that there will be no difference whatsoever and you'll see at the end of the video the shots of this van outside when it's all dry and it's polished and it's rebuilt there is no indication anywhere on this van that there's been any blends put into this van although on say like this side we've put one on the front windscreen pillar we've put one on the both the door pillars there and one into the quarter panel you know none of that's going to show so once this whole van's had a full polish because obviously having the bottom end painted and then polished up 
We will always give the top end a quick run over with the polisher as well, just to make everything shiny and give everything the same gloss level. You know, there will be no difference in this van, top to bottom, anywhere. Um, so as far as paint goes and direct gloss goes, you can see there where the direct gloss blend was. We're just going to go straight over that and we're going to put a nice little clear blend further away than what that was. That's going to leave us with the perfect blended direct gloss. And if there's, like I said a minute ago, if there's one huge tip I could give anyone when it comes to direct gloss, it would be use clear coat to do your blends with, not the gloss itself. Now, you could potentially have another gun in the booth with you and just drop a little bit of gloss over your blends rather than blend gloss in the whole panel like this or sorry rather than clear coat in the whole panel like this if you really wanted to um, but for me I find that just letting this tack off and that is the key to doing it when you put this clear coat over you don't let the van fully dry down or anything like that all you want to do is let that last coat of gloss tack off like you would before you put the next coat of gloss on um, while you're say out mixing your clear up and then come straight back in with your clear when that last coat of gloss is tacked off and go straight over the gloss with the clear coat because you go in 2k paint on top of 2k paint so everything would will adhere absolutely fine there's no issue with getting runs or anything because it's just like putting another coat of gloss over the top but this is just going to seal everything in and make all these blends super super nice and invisible to the eye and give you that perfect blended 2k gloss without having all the issues or potential issues that you can get from trying to polish in direct gloss also for all you regular viewers that are live on the premiere with us at the moment i'd love it if you guys could join us over on the unique coatings channel for mixed powder coating video that he's putting up tonight We'll be heading over there live on his premiere straight after my video airs so if you guys could join us over there the link will be in the description for this video so you guys can see a bit of mixed powder coating work that he's been smashing out in the other side of the business. And I also just want to say a huge thank you to all you guys on Facebook, Instagram, YouTube and all our other social media that have been sending your well wishes after the other week when I was ill. Um, I have had the all clear from the hospital now. I am on the mend. It'll take another few weeks before I am fully back to normal, but I am back in the shop, fighting fit again and getting back to a normal working routine, but trying not to push it too hard. Um, a lot of you guys reached out to me after I put that video up um, and mentioned that I had been taken ill because I've been working too hard, which was what was put down as the main cause of it. I've just been pushing myself too hard and my body's just said enough's enough and it's time to slow down a little bit. Um, but as I said, a lot of you guys reached out to me to say that quite amazingly, a lot of you have done the same and also a lot of you not only have done the same and put yourself in hospital because of it but also a lot of you guys are on the verge of doing the same so i know i've had a chat with a few of you to try and encourage you to slow down a little bit and it is easier said than done even myself you know this was probably three days after i was in hospital that was painting this van and just doing this little job on this van absolutely knackered me out 
and I thought and felt like I was good again the day that I was doing this van. But at the end of this doing this van, I felt like I just resprayed two whole vans. Um, I just did not have the energy that I did the week before or a couple of weeks before that. Um, so it encouraged me to slow down because obviously, you know, without my health, I can't do the job that I love and also make these videos for you guys. So I would encourage any of you guys that are pushing the limits and, you know, like myself, I knew I was pushing the limits and you will as well. So just take note and please do take care. And if you need a break or you get to the point where, you know, your body's feeling heavy and you're tired, just take that day. You know, or take the weekends, take the kids to the park like I did, or have a little bit of time off just to sit and relax and let your body recharge because there's nothing worse than going through something like that and thinking that, you know, everything as far as you and home and, you know, things just won't be the same again because you have made yourself ill and the potential of lasting damage from something that happens like that is very serious. So do be careful, guys. I do encourage any of you. If you need it, do take a break. You know, as much as we love the job and some of us run our own businesses, you know, business can wait, but your health can't, unfortunately. So I hope you guys have enjoyed this video. Please do join us for mixed video over on Unique Coatings shortly, and I'll see you again soon. Bye for now.